hello friends welcome to factory io tutorials and uh, in this first tutorial you are going to learn that what is factory io and uh, how it is used and also we are going to learn some basic logics in order to code a plc so let's get started factory io is an advanced plc learning software in which you need just a computer and a plc connected to it through ethernet port but if you don't have a plc then you can use different simulation software that are supported by factory io like control io and siemens tio portal so in these tutorials we are going to learn how to use control io to control different industrial applications in factory io so let's begin so to download factory io the link is in the description so you can go and check it out and after installing factory io you will get this type of interface and to get started click on new and here you will get into the factory so here you can switch to different camera positions like this fly camera over here or this first person camera okay so on the top right corner here you can see this option where you can add different components to your factory like this conveyor or different switches push buttons like this start push button and uh, different other components like this robotic arm okay so to turn the direction of any component just select it and uh, left click on it and uh, click on this plus sign and here we can change different positions similar with this push button For this Y, I press this plus sign and I can change the position. Okay, so let's get into the control IO and learn the function blocks. For that, go to file and drivers and select the control IO. Okay, so as you can see over here, we have sources and this boom and we get a simple on off switch. When I turn on, the output is on and when I off it, the output is off. So here we have a numerical also and the function of this numerical is very simple to set time frame for a timer like 1 second, 2 second, 4 second, 5 second. So, and also it very useful for the counter in order to give a standard that it counts 4 or 5 boxes and after that it turns the output or it is resetted and uh, here we have a date time to set a date and time and turn on the output. So, here we have tags. So whatever output or input or multiple components we add into this factory all we get into this control IO in the tag option. So as you can see over here we have already added our simple start push button 
over here yes over here we have already added a simple push button and to control it in the control IO here we get in the tags and this start button and here we get a uh, input block and uh, this roller conveyor is the output and to turn on this conveyor we can also connect it to the on off switch or we can also connect it through this start button so when I run and when I press this on off switch the roller conveyor is turned on as you can also see over here in the factory we have turned on the roller okay or you can also connect it to a push button like this one And when I press it, the conveyor is start, and when I release it, the conveyor is stop. So to keep it turned on, we have to set the output conveyor, and for that we need a set command that we will be learning in the next video. Okay, so here we have also memory blocks. So in memory we have bool, integer, float, date time and time span. So here I have added three components. Okay, so keep one thing in mind that if you have taken a bool with the address zero, then don't take another bool with the same address. Like if I take this bool, it has the same address as the first one. So what I do? I simply change the address like 1 or 2 or you can take anything so otherwise what will happen that if I connect a source with it and when I turn on the source as you can see over here the bool with the same address is also turned on and if I take this bool with a different address like 1 and when I run it as you can see over here only the bool with the address 0 is turned on and the bool with the address 1 is not turned on it's turned off so this is one thing you should keep in your mind so it also important for this integer float also so Let's move forward and uh, let's see different function blocks. Here we have different automatic counters, extra logical, math, rational, and equality timers. Different blocks over here that we will be discussing in the next video. And also, we have different utilities and settings. So, that's it from this video. And uh, in the next video we are going to learn different function blocks and uh, see you in the next video thanks for watching